Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Like Lloyd Friend and all, having a brown pants moment in Tunisia, this is the Discriminating Gamers. Hey kids, do you like that DC Comics deck building game? Of course you do. If you don't, you're a jerk. Ah, I still love you. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at the latest iteration of the DC Comics deck building game, Teen Titans Go! from Cryptozoic Entertainment. Did you know, did you know, did you know that the deepest in the ocean you can go is approximately 2,500 feet before your head explodes? Did you know, did you know, did you know that even if you swim a couple feet, there are sharks and piranhas and electric gills that would love for you to eat? Come now, children, come and play and listen to the words I say. I just don't want you to come to harm. Did you know, did you know, did you know that some people think that Hitler isn't dead and he's probably in... Teen Titans video. Go! from Cryptozoic Entertainment is, of course, the latest iteration of the DC Comics deck-building game. Now, it's set, of course, in the kind of cartoon universe of the Teen Titans, and you've got the same kind of artwork that comes from the from the uh, series there. And uh, But essentially, it plays more or less very similar to the, the, the Severus engine games we've seen so far. Not just the DC Comics deck building game, but of course the NHL hockey and the Lord of the Rings games, etc., etc. This has been a very successful uh, kind of mechanical uh, deck building system for Cryptozoic. And of course, uh, there's been several iterations of the DC Comics deck building game. Now, what's unusual, first of all, about this one is this is the first one of these games that I'm aware of that doesn't have the same shaped box. It's a longer box, it's a thinner box, it's not the same shape. Now, one of the first things you do need to know, too, is this is not a two-to-five player. This is a two-player game. So this is just a one-on-one. -on -one. It's kind of like the uh, the uh, Joker versus Batman, the rivals, right? It's kind of similar to that. It's just a two-player game. But again, it's going to play very similar to the other DC Comic deck building games. If you played those games, you pretty much know how to play this one with just a few exceptions. Here's what I'm talking about. Now, when you start a game of Teen Titans Go, uh, you essentially choose your oversized hero card. You get, uh, uh, I think, five or six different uh, oversized heroes to choose from, and of course, as you're playing it, you get the specific um, abilities that come with that oversized hero that will help you throughout the game. But instead of just putting all the other heroes you don't use back in the box, you actually put them out face, uh, you know, face down on their other side, because on the other side, they are sidekicks. And it says how you can recruit them and then what their special ability is as well, which usually is not as good as their regular ability, but it's still pretty good. Well, what you can do is during the course of the game, if you play certain card combinations, you can actually claim one of those sidekicks from kind of the sidekick row, whatever we're going to call it there. You can claim one of those sidekicks. But here's the thing. Even as you're playing, you can also essentially steal a sidekick from another player if you play their recruit requirements. So you can trade these sidekicks back and forth, and also throughout the game, some of the cards that'll come up, maybe some of the weakness cards or other things, will cause you to lose sidekicks. Some attacks will force you to lose sidekicks. So there's a lot of things going on with these sidekicks, but they're great because, again, they give you some advantages, but you can you can steal them. They're they're going in all sorts of places. Uh, so it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of uh, interaction on that level here as well. Now the second big kind of new mechanic here are the event cards. So as you are at the beginning of your turn when you go to reset the lineup, if you pull out an event card, you place that event card next to your nemesis, your big bad guy, and you leave that space empty. You, you, you will have fewer cards to recruit from that turn. But when you see the, um, the event next to the, to, the, to the baddie, it's going to trigger some, of course, generally negative event. You know, it may say, you know, if, if, if you recruit a hero of like cost five or more, your opponent gets to draw a card, you know, or, or, if, or if something happens, maybe you lose a psychic, you know, just all sorts of fun and interesting uh, and, and things that kind of throw a monkey wrench in what you're trying to do when the, these events come out. Now, when you defeat a nemesis, um, then the you can choose, if there are multiple events, which there can be multiple events, you can choose one of those events to discard, to destroy, uh, in which case you can kind of narrow those down, but they do keep coming up throughout the game. Now, also about the nemeses, your first nemesis that you face, he is going to be a cost 8, but all subsequent nemeses will be cost 10. All of them are cost 10, but of course they have their own little kind of unique uh, attacks and funky things that are going to happen throughout the game as well. 
Now, your starter cards here are also a little bit different. Instead of punch and vulnerability, you have punch and snack time. And essentially, snack time lets you get rid of weaknesses. So it's not completely useless like the vulnerability in the DC Comics deck building game. There is that as well. Also, the weaknesses in this game are different. They, they, they do different things to you. It's not just a static uh, weakness card that gives you a negative one victory point. In this, it's not a negative one victory point. It's just a zero victory point. But they do do kind of funky things that will screw with you in your hand during the course of the game. Now, just like in the regular DC Comics deck building game, uh, the game ends when you either run out of Nemesis in the Nemesis uh, deck, or the main deck runs out when you've got to refill it. When those things happen, of course, both players tally up all the victory points on all of their cards. Whoever has the most victory points wins Teen Titans Go! So, uh, a couple of thoughts on Teen Titans Go. First of all, um, I'm generally not a fan of this kind of artwork, and I'm not familiar with Teen Titans Go, the TV series. I haven't watched it, and I know it's kind of geared more toward kids, which is fine. It's just not my cup of tea, the artwork on here. It didn't, I didn't hate it, and it's like, oh, I'll never play that game because I don't like the art. You know, I don't care. I know a lot of people get, say, you know, if, if some screen caps or an art they don't like, they have a fit, and that's it. And to me, the game's the thing. If, if the game's good, I can deal with art that I'm not a huge fan of, and, you know, so that's not it. But just, you know, generally speaking, I'm not a fan of this kind of art style. <clears throat> but I was I was interested because I do like to play the, the various iterations of DC Comics deck building games and the, and the larger Severus Engine games. I, most of them, I'd say the vast majority of them, I have really enjoyed. One or two I was kind of eh about, but generally they're very fun. I mean, the hockey game, the NHL hockey game, I remember, I, I know nothing about hockey, I don't care for hockey at all, um, but I loved that game. I thought it was a really fun game. So I, I'm always interested in playing these these games and seeing how they go. Now what's interesting here about Teen Titans Go is first of all, the event cards are fun. They, they throw, like I say, they add some variety and spice to the game, which I really like. And I also really like the sidekicks. I think the sidekicks are a lot of fun because it's kind of a, it's another level of competition. You're trying to collect the best team, you want the best team, um, just because it's going to give you more points, more power, but the other guy, he's maybe trying to steal yours, and, and it, it's just a lot of fun. It's, again, just another way to make cool and fun and interesting card combinations, especially the more you get, and then that other kind of level of competition where you kind of have a tug-of-war over those, over those team members as well. Like that a lot. That was a lot of fun. <clears throat> um, the things with the weaknesses, where they're, where they're different, was fun, and the snack times is, is good. Generally speaking, what makes a deck builder work, what makes deck building fun is combinations. Can I make really fun and sometimes unexpected combinations? Can I do fun things with my card? And um, that is generally the case here. You can make some really fun and really interesting combinations. And that's really what it's all about. So I really like that. The card costs are... I, I don't know how to, how to phrase this um, exactly. <clears throat> I almost feel like the game how it plays, it is geared toward a little bit younger players. Not, like, really little, but it just feels a little, a hair less complicated than the regular DC Dick Comics deck building game, and I can't really explain it. Um, certainly, you do get some of these combinations, which, you know, a real little kid's not going to be able to get, but but maybe a slightly younger kid than than <clears throat> some of the some of the ones in, in the other game. Um, so that was that was interesting. I, it didn't take away anything for me. I just it's just something I, I noted. It seemed like this game. I guess what I'm saying is this game would be more accessible to some younger children than the other game would be um, for the artwork, but also too I think mechanically it will. And I think the I think the age rating on this is like 12 and up, or the other one's like 14 and up. But even I think you know maybe nine, ten could probably pick this one up without too much without too many problems. It's not a terribly difficult game. I mean, the original one isn't either, and, and this one, you know, less so. So I think this game is more accessible to younger players, which is cool. And maybe even just general uh, people, gen, you know, general public who maybe don't play hobby gaming as much or, or are new to deck building, they might pick this one up uh, as well. So, uh, long story short, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought this was another fun addition to the game of um, DC Comics deck building game. Really enjoyed it. Had a lot of fun. Good, solid deck building mechanics. And uh, easy to learn, easy to play. So the recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer for Teen Titans Go is buy it. Thank you once again for joining us today on the Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on the discriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are the Discriminating Gamer, and you know, ladies and gentlemen, I once knew a cyborg, Swedish fella, ate lots of cabbage. Did you know, did you know, did you know, thieves and killers, they are all about... Waiting for you to drop your guard so they can take you out. Come 
our children bring a friend their safety on you does depend how to bring their danger to a halt cause if they die it's probably your fault did you know Zack attack!